Warning, this podcast contains spoilers. Hello everyone and welcome to the As Seen on TV podcast for Once Upon a Time Season 6, Episode 6. Dark Waters. I am your host, Cleo, and with me I have Jacob. Hello. Guys, look who's here. I'm back! Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've been uh, absent. I recently caught up. Just in time for everybody to go to BlizzCon, and here I am. I'm going to try to stay yes. caught up, but I can't promise anything. Yeah, well, I'm glad you did, because... Personally, I mean, I had doubts, too, about this season. Because mm-hmm. uh, season five wasn't that great, especially that first half. Mm-hmm. Getting, getting a little worried. At the end of season five, I was worried, too. I'm like, oh, my God, are we going to go? Because uh, I like the idea of the evil queen be a, being a separate entity. But I was worried that we are going to be backtracking. The problems that we already solved seasons ago, and now they're going to be brought up again. I don't, and I, I don't like when shows, you know, backtrack like that. I was worried that that was going to happen. It has happened this season so far. Not as bad as I thought it was going to be, though. Yeah, because while while we're seeing the evil queen again, it's sort of like a almost a different evil queen. Like, yeah. She's not the same. We learned in Jekyll and Hyde's episode, their backstory episode. Mm-hmm. Like when you split yourself in half, the original is still the same. Nothing really changed. Like you're not taking the evil out of you. Yeah. You're just, you know, manifesting the evil into, a, you know, a physical being you yourself didn't change there's nothing you know Mm -hmm. missing but the copy is just part of a person or rather the part of you you know that you that you think is the like bad part of you yeah and in a weird twist it was the opposite with jekyll jekyll was the jackass and hyde was not that Hyde was perfect, but no. before, before Jekyll threw What's-Her-Face out the window. But compared, you know, compare the two. Yeah, exactly. Hyde is the better one. Yeah. Which is interesting for the Jekyll and Hyde story that we all know. It's definitely a nice twist mm-hmm. that I personally like. And, on, and they copied a story that I wrote my sophomore year. No way. They did. And I'm writing us. And I am writing this right now. It's in a book, in a notebook that, and I want to like turn this into a book. So in my story, it's called "My Name Isn't Peter." It's about a boy named Peter. He has um, schizophrenia. He has split personality syndrome. So his other personality is named Bridge, and Bridge is like a jackass, and he's like a sociopath. At the end of the story, we find out. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Spoiler alert for this story that no one's heard of and one that I made up. At the end of the story, it turns out that Peter was does not have a split personality. Bridge was the original person, and Peter is the other personality. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that happens a lot. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a psychologist. I don't like take anything I say as like truth, but things I have seen in in other media's and stuff. Um, the secondary personality sometimes is the stronger one. Mm-hmm. That that ha- I've seen that a lot. Um, yeah, I was so disappointed when they died. It was just like that's that's it. It seemed quick. Yeah, way too quick. Seemed, yeah, and I thought, okay, like this isn't it. Like, like I thought, okay, next episode they're gonna like do something, and then like it's not. Yeah. And then, like everything's gonna just be fine. Carrying on now. But no, no, uh, Jekyll was actually stabbed in the part that you do need. Uh, yeah, they're, they're gone. Yeah, it's a little disappointing. 
but it's okay. Aladdin made up for it. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. You know, one comes out, another one comes in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we did get Aladdin, which I love. Um, yeah, and I think they're doing. I think they're doing it a, a great job with that with that story. He's got such a heavy accent. He, it's so heavy. <laughs> sometimes I can't understand what he's saying. I know, and I'm usually really good at like those British accents. What, but it's not his accent's not British. What is his accent? I, um, I know this. I know this actor. He's Australian. Okay, but usually I'm good with like the various English Australian accents. But this, he's yeah. he's got very thick accent. Yeah, and sometimes like okay, I can get I can get like a general idea of what he's saying, but I can never quite make out the words that he's saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was struggling too. Um, hey Sally, Sally's here. Hi Sally. Oh, and Danielle's here too. Hello Danielle. Um, so yeah, this episode's about uh, Captain Nemo and the Nautilus, yes. which, which was I was super excited cool. for. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we don't have a lot of those. No. Uh, I haven't. At least I personally have not seen like that um, story interpreted uh, to film very much. I mean, there's yeah. the Disney movie. Um, that's about it, though. That's, like, the only version I'm familiar with. Yeah, and I, I, the one I'm familiar with, you know, adapting outside of the original story is, um, Lee of Extraordinary Gentlemen. It was a comic book, and then it was a, a movie. Um, and cool. Captain Nemo and the Nautilus was in that. Um, and he was kind but of now, my favorite part. Now we got it here. Yeah, now we have it here. And I love this I version just, of Nemo. He's yeah. awesome. Oh, yeah, I was excited to see, because, like, I'm always excited to see what Once Upon a Time does with these stories. Mm-hmm. So, and, like, and how they weave it into other people's stories. I mean, it's Captain Nemo, so, I mean, yeah, it's going to be a part of Hook's story. Yeah. So, we have, so at the beginning of the episode, we have some time ago in the Atenian Forest. Okay, this is, like, the time during the Dark Curse. So I'm guessing this is like in that point where like everybody like there's that like that one pocket of the enchanted forest that didn't get like cursed. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing we're in that. Um, and so we have Hook, and he sees someone on his ship, and this person says, "Oh, I'm no one." And ha, huh, funny because Nemo means no one. Oh, does it? Um, I didn't know that. It does. It mean it means no one. Um, so, like, this guy is a stowaway, he says, oh, I'm no one, and then Hook's about to kill him, you know, as Hook, as old Hook would do, and then they see what they think is a sea monster in the oceans. Mm-hmm. And, uh, no one says, nope, that's not a sea monster, and then he pushes Hook into the water, says, I'm saving your life mm-hmm. by pushing you into the ocean, next to this, next to what you think is a sea monster. Yeah. Now it's the Nautilus. Mm-hmm. It's a submarine, mm-hmm. and I like the concept of Nemo go Nemo, having got his revenge and having feeling feeling of uh, uh, emptiness by yeah. getting it, and he's sort of going around looking, specifically looking for people who have vendettas, yeah, and trying and taking them on his crew and trying to be like, no, there's a better way. Trust me, it really sucks. Getting revenge. So I don't, I don't know if this is in the original story. I know in the Disney version, the reason why Captain Nemo built the Nautilus and why he like um you know in the ocean, it's like because like he's given up on society, at least at least on land. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I that like, but I, yeah, I do like this though. Like he's actually helping people, and like he's not he hasn't given up on humanity. He's like you know trying to restore faith in humanity. Yeah. Um, and so he goes around, you know, collecting all these people, what his family, that's what he called them. Mm-hmm. And there's another person on this ship, um, his first mate, I think it was. Yes, Liam. Yeah, I was going to save that, but okay. Yeah, oh, it's sorry. Liam. <laughs> it's, it's, it's Hook's little brother, Liam. Yes. And I knew, but I knew, I knew it was Liam when um, they were talking about, because before we knew it was Liam, like, um, in the flashback, Hook and um, First Mate, they were talking um, about, like, you know, their stories. Like, he mm-hmm. said, oh, my family was killed in front of me, and, like, he's, like, and, like, what I wouldn't get... He, so he said something along the lines of, um, 
like oh the person like could be like you know standing right next to me and like what i wouldn't you know give to like have my revenge i'm like oh yeah hook standing right next to you i wonder who you are uh you know i was pretty oblivious while i was watching this episode and even when like he goes to stab hook i'm like wait why is he stabbing hook like i had someone had to explain this to me and i was like oh because <laughs> i completely yeah. forgot that whole thing with hook killing his dad like i forgot yeah. that whole thing so i was like oh, okay now that makes sense is yeah because like, i had my suspicions i mean when i found out this was a hook episode i'm like okay yeah more hook, more hook uh, backstory mm-hmm. and like when this kid started like talking about like you know his past and like i'm getting his revenge i'm like oh my god are you Liam? Like, I didn't, like, immediately say, oh, that's Liam. Mm-hmm. I, like, started, like, getting an angle. I'm like, oh, my God, you could be Liam. Like, are you Liam? And then, like, when they, then when Hook mentioned, you know, like, oh, I killed my father, I'm like, okay, it's Liam. Yeah. Uh, but this is, this is now going to be an interesting dynamic with Liam because yeah. we just saw the original Liam pass on. He's, he's yeah. in a better place. Um, we're probably not going to see him again. No. So having this Liam, I think it's, 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 I think it's just going to be, be a nice, interesting thing. And another layer to this really weird family dynamic we have going on with, uh, just, you know, the royal family. It's very weird. Yeah. Speaking of, yeah, we got a lot of family stuff this episode. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but in yeah, but in the flash, we'll finish up with the flashbacks. So Captain Nemo takes Hook to he wants to find this treasure in like this underground like cave. Mm-hmm. So they go, they put on these cool diving suits. Yes, steampunkish punkish diving suits. And there's a treasure chest. That's what they're looking for. It's in the cave. And Hook's like, really? That's what we're here for. Hook mm-hmm. tries to leave. There's a giant ass kraken in the water that they were just in. Yeah. Which I loved seeing. I love seeing. Um, I loved seeing the Kraken. I was hoping we we're gonna get Ursula this episode. Like I know they didn't announce her coming back, but I was like hoping like it was like a little surprise that Ursula come like Ursula would come back. Yeah, I, I actually think that actress um, is busy. Uh, I think she's in con- that sh- new show Conviction. She's yeah, she's with, uh, with Haley Atwell, Atwell. Uh, which is pretty good so far. But I digress. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, but um, I was hoping she would come back. Because Ursula is also a part of Hook's story. Mm-hmm. But I'm guessing this is... But, like, this is, like, during the Dark Curse. So, and Ursula was before the Dark Curse. And, like, she ran away and all her stuff. So... Yeah. But I was hoping she would come back, like, present day. Like, help Hook out or something. But, no, uh, I guess Ursula's done in this show for now. For now, yeah. Yeah, but they uh, they defeat the Kraken. They get the chest and they open the chest and it's just a key. Yeah, this huge ass, this huge ass chest, and it's with this tiny rusty key. And he's like, "That's it." And I'm like, "And I, was, I had flashbacks to the second Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Yes, like, it, like it, it's a key. No, it, it's better. It's a drawing. It's a drawing a of a key. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that 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 movie's a little underrated. I like that one. I like all the Pirates movies. Yeah. I feel like all the Pirates movies are overrated. Um, ironically, we're getting another one, like, this year. Yeah. But, um, yeah, they've, they've made, like, Pirates reference in this show before. Mm-hmm. Still waiting on Captain Jack Sparrow to come into this show, but, like, they're never going to do that unless Johnny Depp does right. it. Yeah. Yeah, but this key is for, they called it the Mysterious Island. Mm-hmm. When they said Mysterious Island, I'm like, oh, it's the land of untold stories. Yeah. Cause I, <laughs> honestly, what gave it away was that the, the key looks exactly like the key that Cinderella had. Exactly. Um, which I'm one, now I'm starting to think, okay, like, what's up with these keys? Yeah. Do we have these keys just lying around? What? Who has these keys? I'm getting, like, Kingdom Hearts, you know, flashbacks. <laughs> it's keys. Keys everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, yeah so, me- like, who's who's leaving the keys around? How did Cinderella's mom get one? Yeah, maybe they're like the Dragon Balls, and they're just like spread out all over the world. And like, if you're truly looking for it, you'll find it. 
or maybe when you're not looking for it, you find it. I don't know. That doesn't make sense because they were looking for it. But, um, but yeah, they wanted to sail to this island because like they wanted a place where um, like they wanted like a fresh start, and like this is where you can do that. Mm-hmm. Land of untold stories, like that's where people go when like they don't when like they're not happy with their story. Like, the yeah. current one that they're in. They want it to stop or change yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. and then, then uh, Hook says, you know, eh, not my bag. Then he sees the knife that he used to kill his father. He's like, where the fuck did you get that? And he's like, oh, yeah, it belongs to my first mate. What's your first name? First mate's name? Oh, Liam. <laughs> I only and had, like, Hook- five conversations with the guy. Didn't ask his name. <laughs> <laughs> Because Hook was planning on leaving anyway. He wasn't going to yeah, say. He wasn't getting attached. I'm guessing Hook just booked it after that. Oh, well, for sure. And now we're in present day. Yeah. Uh, I I liked the... Um, well, I like that they made, you know, kind of... Not that they made up, but, like, there's a little bit of the clearing of the air there. You know? Yeah. Liam wasn't actively trying to murder him <laughs> in no. the end. Um, we, we, we'll do have, um, well, so what, what led up to that was, okay, so what we know from last week, Hook, you know, dirty bitch. The shears. Took the shears. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, hide them in a fucking toolbox. The yeah, toolbox seriously. with the little latches that don't even, you don't even put a combination lock on that hook. I don't know what, you're a pirate, <laughs> you should be better at this. But he put the shears in a toolbox. Mm-hmm. In, in Emma's house, no less. Yeah, in their garage, you know. And so you go to, and then you go in Emma's house, and they're making breakfast. And Hook, you don't throw away a kid's pop tarts. Yeah, seriously, what the fuck, man? And I mean, we've seen. Uh, I was gonna call him Liam. <laughs> we've seen Killian and Henry bond and interact before. Like, this time it was weird. Obviously, because he was hiding something. But also, like, yeah. who throws away somebody's food? Come on. He was going to eat that. I mean... I'm like... I don't know. I kind of felt like Hook was... Okay, Hook was in character, but he was out of character. I don't know what... Yeah. I don't know what... It felt like a little off. It might have been because he was hiding the shears and nervous about it, but still. I mean, like, I mean, I wouldn't put it... It's totally in character for Hook to, like, throw away someone's food and, like, make them, like, pirate food, but... it's <laughs> a good point. Yeah. But like I don't know, like for some reason when you when you actually do it, it just feels weird. Yeah. But he's he's trying to be, you know, Henry's dad. Yeah, uh, and that's probably not the greatest first step. Yeah, just but like he he's, he is trying to friend. bond with Henry. I mean, he's bonded with Henry before. Mm-hmm. But like not as like a dad. Yeah. More as a, like more as like you know I'm your teacher Friends. slash big brother. We're mates. Um, yeah, but now he's actually trying to be a dad, which is weird. Um, it's weird yeah. for both of them. Um, and then, so, and then Henry's being all, like, you know, angsty teen. He goes, I'll just take out the trash. You know, the trash that his pop tarts are in. Then Evil Queen shows up. And, you know, and Evil Queen does what she does. She's trying to, like, you know, um, you know, get in there and, like, try to break them apart from the inside. Yeah. I don't, I'm not Henry. I mean, sometimes Henry is smart and sometimes he's stupid because... Evil Queen tells Henry this thing. She's like, oh, like, Hook took the shears. And, like, like so basically she's saying, Hook is trying to save Emma. So he clearly doesn't love her. I don't know what sense that makes. And I don't know why the fuck Henry went along with it. Well, no, I think it's because um, Emma gave him the shears because she trusted him to get rid of them. Mm-hmm. You know, and that was Emma's wish. Yeah. Hook keeping them is against her wish. But, but also is there is said. that, there is that, and I didn't think of this, but, but I think Emma or Henry said, what, were you just going to cut that and not tell her? Were you going to cut her fate and not tell her? Like, yeah. that's, that could happen, and that's fucked up. Yeah, well, Emma does, then, like, back at the end of the episode, Emma would have done the same thing, and she has done the same thing. Um, it's true. Yeah, and, yeah, so Henry, you know, he finds the shears, and he goes to do what Emma actually asked to do. He goes to throw them in the ocean. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, but before that, I love when Henry, um, when like um, Hook's trying to understand video games. He's like, oh he's like, yeah, uh, let me, he's like, show me how to do your video box station thing. And he comes in waving the Xbox controller like, how am I supposed to do this with a hook? <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, it's so priceless. Oh, my God. <laughs> and then, yeah, but then when he comes out, when he comes out with the, with the controller, not knowing how to work it, he notices yeah. that Henry and the shears are gone. Henry is going to throw them in the ocean. While they're over there, then the Nautilus just comes out of the lake. I didn't even know it could fit in there. Um, and they're captured by who I assumed was Captain Nemo at the time. And I'm wondering what happened. It's not Captain Nemo. It's it's Liam who yeah. is, I guess, you know, taking over the ship now. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, as it turns out, Liam actually accidentally stabbed Nemo. Yeah, that's... Uh, he was uh, trying to that hook. That sucks. Yeah. and they But they made it to the land of untold stories. In time. Just, just in time. So Nemo wasn't dead yet. But when they came back over... Which Nemo. has me confused. Yeah. Because everybody we know who came over from the land of untold stories came on the blimp and crashed. Right? Yeah. And then there's the Nautilus. You're a little late. Maybe Hyde also took the Nautilus. That's like a surprise, but... Or maybe the Nautilus can just do that. Maybe. I guess if they had a portal or a key, they could have just done it. Um, Yeah. But it really seemed like Liam was literally the only person on board. (sighs) The crew got eaten. I don't know. I I guess. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but they they think now that they're back in Storybrooke, they think Nemo's dead. That he bled out. Mm-hmm. And so, but Liam takes Hook and Henry to the Nautilus, and he plans on you know finishing what he started and kill Hook. Um, mm. So that's when Hook reveals to Henry. He says, "Okay, like I want to keep this family together." Yeah. Because way back when I killed my father. Way but back when I was I, an asshole. But when something that I didn't, because Henry already knows the story, he says the thing I didn't tell you was that I had another brother who was like, what, like five years old at the time? Yeah. And I killed my father right in front of him. And I left him. Yeah. And he says, so I don't want to like ruin another, another family. So that's why I'm being the way that I am. And he says, so we're not going to let this happen again. So he puts Henry in another one of those cool ass diving suits. And there's only one diving suit, and I don't know why there's only one diving suit on that big ass ship, but there is. And he sa- and he says he says to Henry, "Yeah, go, you know, get rid of the shears, you know, find Emma, and I'm gonna stay here." So that's when we get the showdown between Liam and Hook, and like they're fighting, and then Henry comes back because of course he does, because Henry it's doesn't Henry. do it does what he told, but Henry shows up, and then Liam hesitates. Because Liam was in that same situation. He does not want to put Henry in that same situation by killing what is essentially Henry's father figure in front of Henry. Mm -hmm. And that's how we were able to defeat Liam, get him in the hospital. And then him and Hook have that. They rekindle the relationship that they never really did have Mm -hmm. because they didn't really know each other. And then he says, oh, I wish Nemo was here to see this. Oh, look, he, he's in the they same room that in. we are in. Yeah. Well, we were in the hospital earlier this episode, and they wheel a dude, a bald dude, past, and I'm like, hey, I bet oh, that's Nemo. Dude. I know who you are. <laughs> yeah. While we were there, yeah, it was uh, Snow and Charming who yes. um, wheeled him in, and while Mary Margaret was there, she runs into Belle because she's getting her first ultrasound. Yes. That was and awkward. And she didn't tell Rumble about it because mm-hmm. she doesn't know what to do. She comes back and she has two copies, um, pictures of the baby, because mm-hmm. you know that's what they do. So she decides that she is going to give one of the copies to Rumble because she wants him to have a nice relationship with his um, second son, even though your second son hates you. Um, <laughs> baby, baby Mo is what I'm going to call their son. Um, Mo from Morpheus. Oh. Baby Mo. Like baby it. Mo. Baby Mo hates you. 
Rumple. But Belle and Baby Mom told Belle, you know, stay away from Dad because I hate Daddy. But still, Belle went against your unborn son's wishes, and still she still wants, you know, to have you know Rumple to have some relationship with his son. So she goes over to the pawn shop, and she is going to give Rumple the um, ultrasound, not in person. She's just going to slip it under the door. What she doesn't know is on the other side of the door, Regina and Rumpel the zoom of the day. Ugh. Why? I don't know. I thought we were done Why? with that. Me too. Why? Ugh. I thought we weren't going to go any further with that. They did. But I don't like, like Because the evil queen said, she said, like, oh, I remember, like, something you taught me. Like, if you want something, then you've got to, like, go for it with, like, you know, you got to go, like, full in with everything you got. And then she just kisses him, and, like, he's like, uh, I don't know why. Why, why, well, why? It's gross. <laughs> and it turns out, no. She's, he asks, oh, you want me? She's like, no. She wants, uh, it turns out, I don't, why did she kiss him in the, why did she do that? Like, she I don't know. Want, I was too busy oh, dry heaving him? to listen at that point <laughs> no because like i was disgusted i'm like no do not do this and then like then she said like no that's not what i want like then, then i was confused I'm like what why did you make me throw up in the corner for nothing i mean thank god that you're not gonna do that well, anymore she she but. she wanted the shears even though she told henry she didn't want them because she takes them at the end or does she give them back to gold i think she I guess she gives gives it to him she gold. had the shears first. Okay, and she gives them to gold. Oh, right, because she retrieves it from the bottom of the ocean. Because apparently there's a creature down there that was her favor. Well, I mean, she posed as Ursula, so I would imagine there are a bunch of. I'm I'm guessing there. either either that or it was Ursula. Oh, maybe. Um. But she she proposes a plan with gold's help, which is to take Snow's heart. Really Ooh, just, original. I don't. I don't even want to get into that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, done, I'm done with that. I'm done with snow. And I'm so done does with she, anything that has to do with snow. If she wants Snow's heart, doesn't she have to take it out of Snow's chest and Charming's chest? Because then she'll have the whole heart. <laughs> I don't know. They haven't touched on this heart thing. Yeah, they we really haven't. haven't. We, haven't been, we haven't been dealing with hearts this season. No, but. You know the evil queen's back. What, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't know. I don't care about snow. I don't want to leave 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 her alone for a bit. Um, she and snow. You leave. You leave your baby alone a lot. Um, yeah. Seriously, we haven't seen baby Neil in forever. We, we haven't. And or was he in the uh, breakfast scene? I don't think he was. Um, he's at the convent again. <sighs> <sighs> yeah. So, but Boy's gold get has. By nuns. Gold has the shears now, and I Gold mentioned that those shears are his. No, they're not. Yeah, they are literally he's, the fates. He's like a whiny little bitch. Like other people can't play with his toys. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. He really is. He's and he like, cuts oh, his it's, hair, it's and he thinks all brooding, and it's like, shut the fuck up. No, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I, I can't. I can't with you. I can't with you. Yeah. Well, I lack the ability to can with you right now. Off of that. <laughs> oh, thank God Dom's not here to defend him. <laughs> yeah. So off so off of that. Yeah, anyway. We'll go, we'll go, we'll go back to Mary Margaret. Mm -hmm. So Mary Margaret and David, like, because uh, Archie is a cricket again. Yes. Yeah, Regina goes back to uh, Zelina's house, and she, call, and she wants to distract them. She calls out the evil queen and Zelina outside to distract them. And Snow frees uh, Jiminy. Mm -hmm. I don't know why yet. I honestly don't care if you left him in there or you didn't. But yeah, you could have literally just taken the cage and run. <laughs> but they, they freed him and they wake the baby. And then yeah. Delaney hears the baby. And I'm mentioning this scene really doesn't have to do with anything. But I'm mentioning this scene because of the shade that Zelina threw. And I loved it. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. So Zelina comes in with the baby. She's like, what'd you do to the baby? They said, we did nothing. She's like, well, excuse, she's like, excuse me, but with you two, I'm not taking any chances. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, they, they took, uh, what, Maleficent's baby. They've done terrible things to other people's babies. 
Let's just let's make that clear. Um, but yeah, I... And also, I don't blame Selena for being apprehensive, but I no, think also... Do not, no babies around Snow anymore. Just no. Snow, you're not even allowed to have your own baby. <laughs> Poor, poor baby Neil's being raised by nuns. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, the evil queen is 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 not helping Zelina's paranoia. That's that's for sure. But you know, I think I and think when, a lot of what Zelina feels is is founded. You know, yeah. You know, which is why I was why I was talking about backtracking this season. Mm -hmm. We already did the Zelina redemption story arc. Why are you having her come back? Why? I know she's a bit... I mean, she's still in that early stage of redemption, but why does... Because I praised Zelina because of what Regina did in the finale of last season. That Regina wanted to take the evil out of her. She was taking the easy way out by splitting herself in two. Mm -hmm. Zelina didn't do that. Exactly. Zelina took the pain and dealt with it. She womaned up. So, yeah, Zelina was being the bigger person, mm -hmm. which I wouldn't expect from Zelina. And I've always loved Zelina, and one of the reasons why I did love her is because is because she was able to, like, you know, deal with her, like, wicked side, and Regina couldn't. But now she's going back into it. So I'm just hoping this doesn't go on too long. Uh, yeah, and I think that just the big thing is... Zelina feels snubbed, like yeah. abandoned a little bit. And I yeah. feel like even when even when Zelina opened up to Regina, Regina still is just not around. She's not there for her sister. No, I don't know. It's I mean, understandably so, because you know a lot of shit happens in this town. So yeah, you know, nobody has time for anybody in this show. Um, we did get a bit of Aladdin and Jasmine. Yes. So Aladdin's not the savior anymore. No, he cut... We, and, and this was a thing that I was concerned about, but this, it cleared it up, because I thought, oh, what if there's a chance you cut your, uh... Because I thought Jafar might have been lying to him. It's like, oh, this severs you from your fate, but what the shears actually do in Greek myth is they sever a body from a soul. So I thought he was tricking him into killing himself. Um, but that's not the case. So that was cleared up. He didn't, no, he did use them. And, um, he, yeah, he not did those shears. Well, well, he said that he said these shears belong to the fates. And that was yeah. why I assumed it was the same shears. Yeah. But they're different. Yeah, Different shears. But um, yeah, they... And I, it doesn't just work for saviors. I guess it's just like anyone. It cuts your fate, whatever... That's very, it's very vague, but... It really is very vague. I wonder if we're going to get, like, a more concrete answer, a uh, concrete, like, definition later. I don't know, but... so But he used them. I don't even know how would he use these. Like, where are the strings? <laughs> There's a bug behind you cutting? just go like this. <laughs> I don't know. That's a super good question. Because Aladdin I mean, used them, so he must have already like, got... How, how do you figure how do you that out? Because, like, Javar didn't give instructions. Like... No. And people have been opening and like closing them, so like, are yeah, you right? accidentally cutting your own? Pay? I don't know. Because and I have the same question. There's a show on Disney Channel called Star vs. the Forces of Evil, mm -hmm. where like and like they do a lot of dimension hopping in that show, and they have these things called dimensional scissors. And what you do is you literally cut a hole in the universe and like go to a different dimension. But the thing is, they keep opening and closing these scissors, so I'm afraid they're accidentally going to cut a hole in the universe. And, like, so, like, yeah, same thing here. Like, they don't explain how these things work. Yeah. That's really funny, dimensional scissors. That's re That reminds me of um, his dark materials, because it's a knife, the subtle knife, I think, and you cut, you cut a hole through dimensions. Yeah. So, don't know how these shears yeah. work. Um, Maybe you I, just I have to think really hard and then go, choop. And I don't, why are they shears? Why can't they just be scissors? Because, you know, you use shears for sheep. Yeah. Uh, well, there's a short answer, and it's back in the day there were no such thing as scissors, and you only had shears. 
well, there was no such thing as magic back in those days, but... Mm. Yeah, well, you know. Yeah, but, yeah, so he's not the savior anymore, and he did, and I'm, I was so worried we were going to do that whole thing where Aladdin keeps this from Jasmine, but no, he told Jasmine she's okay with it. And that's something I'm, I'm very happy they're not doing, is, like, dragging shit out. And it's something that the evil queen is helping to facilitate because like, oh, Hook could have had that in his in his uh, toolbox for for like episodes upon episodes. But the evil queen is like, oh, yo, they're in there. So I'm kind of like grateful for that, that that's getting handled and it doesn't sit around forever. Yeah. So Jasmine doesn't care that he's not the savior. She still wants Aladdin to help. Yeah. And I think she doesn't exactly say what she needs help with, though. Yeah. Because we're not exactly sure what happened to Agrippa. Yeah. And why did you leave out this giant detail? Because in the last episode, you said, oh, I like Agrabah's in trouble. You could have mentioned that there is no Agrabah anymore. Oh, that's right. Because it, it, it just disappeared, which I think it's it, just it's been just moved. Gone. Yeah. Like she said there was a sandstorm. And when she got back, there's like it was gone. Yeah. And I think she's now, assuming it got buried. Which I think it just got moved somewhere else. I don't, but like if it was buried, then it's not really gone, it's still there. So like the way she's talking, I don't quite understand what she means. Does she mean like, was Agrabah literally blown away? Hmm. Or was it buried and it's just too far that you can't dig it up? Or did you literally just forget where Agrabah is? I don't think it's that last one, although that is funny to think about. Uh, but what I assumed was that it got buried, and when a city gets buried, you know, everyone's kind of dead. So mm -hmm. maybe that's what she thinks. She thinks everyone's there's, dead. And there's nothing we can do. Yeah. Then, like, what is Aladdin going to do? I don't know. So but, I, that's why I don't think it's buried. Yeah. I think it literally just, like, got picked up and taken somewhere else. We should take Agrabah and push it somewhere else. Yeah. Sponge Bob reference. Um, yeah, so I don't understand what exactly she needs help with and how Aladdin yes. is going to help. But okay. too much pressure, Aladdin runs away. And he ran away, and like, Jasmine texted Emma, because she can text. She texted Emma saying, like, oh, I lost Aladdin. Next scene we see him in, he's literally across the street from Granny's breaking into a car. Oh, right, yeah, I was going to say, wasn't he breaking into a car? <laughs> She's like, oh, no, I lost him. Okay, Jasmine, you know, you should exit the diner. He's right there. Yeah, but she, I don't know, but maybe she can't try a little bit, Jasmine. <laughs> yeah, but he's breaking into a car. Yeah. And, um, and Emma says, oh, this is what you've been doing. Yeah. Well, you know, Master Thief. And back to the severing of the fate thing. Because, you know, Aladdin's not a savior anymore. But I'm thinking maybe this is going to be like splitting your personality where you're still the same person. Like you haven't stopped being that person. So maybe just because you separate yourself from the fate of being a savior doesn't necessarily mean you stop being a savior. No. Maybe it just means he doesn't have the magic anymore. Maybe, you know. Yeah, which is... I, I keep forgetting that like being the savior doesn't mean you're magical. Because, like, I, that's what I assumed. I thought, like, oh, you're the savior. I don't think that comes with powers. Because I assumed, because the only savior we've seen is Emma. Yeah. Emma, but but Emma was innately magical. Because, like, she had her powers at birth. Mm -hmm. But Aladdin didn't. So I'm guessing, I guess, now we know that if you're a savior, you get powers? Well, I mean, Emma didn't really use her light magic until she came to Storybrooke and uh, assumed the mantle of savior. So, so that could have been something Aladdin also had his childhood didn't realize. And then when he started stepping up, it manifested. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe that is a, like you're rewarded once you take on the mantle, but yeah. yeah so Emma tries to like savior to savior talk. She says, yeah, save, like, yeah, I'm a savior too, and saviors are afraid sometimes. Mm -hmm. And 
the responsibility was too much for Emma. That's why she crashed into the storybook sign because she was trying to leave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then she went back. And she says, yeah, I was afraid too. And like, I try to run away from my problems. It doesn't work. That's what, and so like we learn our lesson of the day and Aladdin goes back to Jasmine. That's when we find out. Then Aladdin says, yeah, I'm ready to go back to Agrabah and like solve the problem. She's like, yeah, about that. The problem Uh, is (laughs) it ain't there. So what are you supposed to do now? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I Listen, I want more Jafar. We haven't had yeah. enough Jafar. I want more Jafar. I want more Wonderland, which we got, we got a little bit. So I want to know what happened. Yeah. Is Jafar still around? Is he still alive in present day? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm interested in this Aladdin story, but it is kind of confusing. Yeah, a lot of questions. And they're like dribbling it a little bit at a time. It's yeah. almost in the background, kind of. It's more like, it's like the D storyline. Yeah. Which is surprising. Which is, I mean, Aladdin, it's a big name. So I would, like, I would, I would expect like this would be like a half, I mean, just Aladdin alone, I would expect that to be like a full half season. Yeah, and I mean, the A storyline is already dead, you know, Jekyll and Hyde, yeah. they're already gone. Still shocked about that. Yeah, very. I don't know. Uh... So I still have my theory about um, Aladdin and Jafar, because we have this serum that, we had. We have this serum that splits people into two. My So my initial theory about Aladdin and Jafar was that Jafar was Aladdin's genie. Now I'm thinking, okay, somehow Aladdin got a hold of this serum and he split himself into two and Jafar is Aladdin's other half. And maybe that's why this Jafar is a different actor than the other one? Possibly. Um, and I think somehow the like this Jafar like found a way to like make himself whole and then that's how he becomes the Jafar we know from Wonderland. Interesting. That's my theory, anyway. I'm hoping they explain it. I really do. Yeah. I'm afraid they won't. I feel like they will. If they explain something as, you know, small as Robin Hood's actor change, they'll explain this. And also with Ursula. They did the same thing there. Yes, exactly. So, so I, I think they will. Something. Do something. Uh, and I went, let's see. Just going back to chat, Sally's still in chat. She says in episode, um, way back in season one, in episode 7.15 a.m. when Snow was at Granny's waiting on David, she is reading The Mysterious Island by Jules Verne. And Jules Verne is, Jules Verne is an author. He does a lot of uh, sci-fi stuff. Um, yeah, so we did mention The Mysterious Island in this um, in this episode. It's where Captain Nemo said he was going to. Jules Verne also did write 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Um, so... Connection there. I didn't make that connection. Thank you, Sally. Yes, very awesome. Uh, and Danielle says, I'm very happy that Emma and Hook talked about them keeping secrets from each other with the Savior Vision. And it's all good. Yay! Great. You guys are talking. This is good. You move in together, you know, can't have yes. these secrets anymore. No more of that. I don't want any more of that. You know, you two go home, watch some Netflix, Chill. make all the babies. All of the babies. Don't make babies. Don't. I think that family is done with babies. Hook is going to be a great father. Better than they're but they're going to be better parents than Snow and David were. David's actually actually David. I would argue is a good father. Snow, you just no, no more babies for you. I don't know. I <laughs> uh, yeah. I I just think Snow and David haven't had an honest shot at being parents, even with Neil. Like Neil was supposed to be your second chance. You're screwing that exactly. up. Here. Exactly. Exactly. I don't know. Yeah, I think that's that's really all I gotta say for this episode. I, I liked at the end um, when Nemo is being wheeled in with Liam, how they kind of, they hold hands like a father-son thing almost. is very, very touching, I thought. Yeah, I'm liking I'm liking that even still in season six, we're still getting more backstory on these characters. Mm-hmm. 
who I thought we were done with their backstories. Yep. Yeah, layers. Layers. Mm-hmm. Onions have layers. Everybody likes parfaits. Uh, yeah. And cake. Everybody likes cake. So, yeah. Um, oh, no. Now I've lost everything. What have I done? Season six. Next episode is called Heartless. I do not have a synopsis for it. Shit. <laughs> yeah, what it looked like from the promo, I, I don't even know what to make of it. So there's this bottle with like a thing in it. We don't know what it is, but the evil queen like has a bottle with a thing in it, and I think it's going to blow up from what it sounds like. Oh. She's like she says like you have like one hour like you have like a set amount of time to like figure out she says you have a set amount of time to figure out what's in this bottle or it's gonna blow up she didn't say that but that's what it sounds like yeah before it so, explodes yeah, so like I don't know it doesn't look like we're getting in like a like a an old story that like from like the public domain mm-hmm. so I. I don't know what to make it this next episode. I mean, from the way it looks, I feel like it's going to be a filler episode. Mm-hmm. It's a, like just like a one-off story, and we're going to like probably get some... We got some flashbacks in the promo with like Charming, so I'm guessing we're going to get more oh. Charming and Snow backstory. I found it. Heartless. In a flashback to the Enchanted Forest, Bandit Snow... Shit, come on. Ugh. This wiki, I swear, drives me crazy. Uh, Bandit Snow dodges a bounty hunter known as the Woodcutter, while Shepard David goes on a fateful journey to sell his family's farm in Storybrooke. The evil queen threatens to destroy the town and everyone in it unless Snow and David surrender their hearts. As Emma, Hook, and Henry prepare to defend Storybrooke, Snow, David, and Regina search for magical sapling created by the first spark of true love. Regina <laughs> uses gold's and the evil queen's burgeoning romance against them. Interesting. And Zelina offers Belle some friendly advice. Yeah. Zelina did that in season five with Belle, and Belle put herself under a sleeping curse. Um, So great job, Zelina. Well, I mean, it kind of helped. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it, so the synopsis mentioned first spark of true love. That is yes. interesting. A, a, a tree born of the first spark of true love. I'm th- well, what was the first spark of true love? I'm thinking, because, you know, we know Blue is an old ass broad. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm, I've always been interested. We never got Blue backstory. Not never. really. We don't know anything about her. Mm. Shady bitch. Still Shady thinking bitch. she's she's behind all this. Yep. And fate. the way the way she and just the way she treated true love in general between Dreamy and Nova, it sounded like she knew what she was talking about. So I'm guessing someone broke her heart like way, way, yeah. way back when. What if? She, what if? And she's really, really old. So like, what if she? And like they said in one episode, they mentioned like she's like the original power or whatever. Mm-hmm. What if she was the original spark of true love? Her and, like, whatever person she was, you know, in love with. Yeah. Because, like, we haven't gotten Blue at all this season. So I'm just, I just, I'm waiting for, like, you know, them to drop the bomb. And I was like, Blue, it's, it's all been Blue. Yeah. They're probably not going to explain what the spark of true love was. It's probably just going to be, like, a thing that is mentioned. Yeah, Maybe. <laughs> And the woodcutter. It doesn't explain why they're searching for it, though. No. I guess the episode will explain it, but, you know, it just, to me right now, it doesn't make sense why they're looking like, for it. I, I, I really can't get anything from what they showed from this yeah. next episode. Which, um, that is on tonight. And yes. I, because we're doing this, but... <laughs> I'll watch it later. Yeah. And see what it's all about. So, yeah, we, we'll find out. So, Jacob, where can the people find you? You can find me here on YouTube at Jacob Salazar, or you can find me on Twitter. Tweet at me throughout the week, throughout the life, at To Nowhere Land. That is T-O-N-O-W-H-E-R-E-L-E-N-D. Join the Nowhere Land Society. Sally says, hashtag Shady Blue. Yes. (laughs) 
You can find me at Cleo Moto on Twitter, Twitch, and Pinterest, and you can find all of us at ASO TV Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Gmail, Google Plus, and right here on YouTube. <laughs> Follow us for some more podcasts from some of your favorite TV shows, video games, and movies. Until next time. Bye guys. Um, hashtag Shady Blue. Shady Blue. Blue the Shady Bitch. <laughs> <laughs>